Did you guys know that whiplash and concussion symptoms are virtually identical? The force that it takes to create a concussion is a whole lot more than the force required to cause whiplash. So with that being said, every concussion has whiplash, but not every whiplash has concussion. But what is whiplash? Since it is the most common and uh, a lot of times patients just are confused whether or not, well, do I have whiplash or do I have concussion symptoms? They're relatively the same. So uh, let's go into whiplash because it is something that we have more control over in terms of fixing versus the intricacies of concussions, such as the stuff that is neurologically uh, wrong with, or not wrong with, uh, neurologically damaged uh, inside the brain. So specifically as it pertains to the structure of the neck. You've got the head that sits on your neck. Our head can bend forward and bend backward and rotate, laterally bend, all these fun things. When we are subjected to whiplash, which is anywhere from like seven to 10 Gs of force, what happens is Say if we're in a car and we're, we're struck from behind, what's gonna happen is the back of the head is gonna arch backwards, hit the back of the headrest, and then bend forwards. So you're gonna, you're gonna have a lot of damage into the ligaments and the, the soft tissue that connects each level of the spine. And this is where you're gonna feel some of that pain. In addition to that, on the side of the neck, we'll pop that off, at the side of the neck, you have what are called facet joints. See these right here? That's a facet joint, that's a facet joint, that's a facet joint. These are the joints that allow us to move in our normal range of motion. So for instance, we have forward bending, extension, rotation, lateral bending. We have these motions all due in part to the function of these facet joints. So when we are exposed to say whiplash, we can damage and injure these facet joints so that they're not functioning properly and you don't have the full range of motion. And when you notice you don't have that full range of motion, typically it starts to hurt. And with whiplash, the longer these facet joints stay irritated and or dysfunctional in that they don't have their full range of motion and that they are uh, continuously displaying signs and symptoms of pain, the longer you're going to have these symptoms of post-concussion, uh, so on and so forth. It's really important to remember that oftentimes it's not a concussion and it actually is more likely whiplash versus the more extreme uh, concussion symptoms. So these facet joints are responsible for our range of motion. Without these facet joints, we would be like robots and we'd stay in the same position, right? But as a human, we are designed to move. We're dynamic creatures, or at least most of us are. Uh, and, and that we don't stay in one position. So this is why it's important to maintain that range of motion in these joints is because we have to move. And if we don't move, uh, like they say, if you don't use it, you lose it. If these facet joints don't have their full range of motion, the nervous tissue that courses out right beside them and the muscles that line them and the soft tissue that, that coats them as well, all start to get irritated. The body starts to send an inflammatory signal and, and you start feeling this achy pain and, and uh, your range of motion goes down, you start getting increased headache symptoms. So by restoring full range of motion of the neck, and uh, addressing any instabilities that may happen in the neck as a result of whiplash, such as the uh, sprain and strain of the, of the ligaments, of the, of the muscles, and of the joint capsular tissue, <clears throat> you can start to uh, take back control of these uh, post-concussive symptoms and reduce them. The research is, is saying that it's not necessarily about the amount of strength or the bulk or mass of muscle that you have created in the neck, say if you are re rehabilitating your neck, but rather your neurological connection to those muscles in that how fast can you activate those muscles when need be. So for instance, if you were to miss a step, fall or whatever it is, can you instantaneously activate those muscles in order to stabilize 
the, the, the segments in your neck for which to reduce the chance of creating an injury in your neck. So it's the turning on mechanism of those muscles, so the neurological connection from your brain to those muscles right past those joints, that's the most important part. If you can con connect to those muscles and activate them uh, as fast as possible, that will reduce the, uh, the risk, let's say, of uh, creating worse symptoms, either through whiplash or concussion. Yes, it is very important for which to continue to strengthen, rehabilitate, uh, and otherwise uh, improve the function of the structure and muscles of the neck, but it's not necessarily gonna prevent, per se, uh, getting uh, a concussion from any kind of fall uh, or, or car accident and that sort of thing. It's all about your reactionary time. So if you improve your reactionary time, you're less likely to have more significant uh, symptoms and, and prolonged uh, symptoms. All right? Now, furthermore, the, the last thing that's rather important and related to the uh, onset of headaches as it pertains to whiplash and or head injuries is from this this right here, this is the vertebral artery. And as you can see, it courses all the way through the neck within the bones on the outside of the neck, right? Now this is really important because if there is any kind of joint restriction within uh, any of those segments of the neck, you can have interference on that blood supply to the brain. This is such a common trigger factor for instigating headaches, creating brain fog. Essentially, the brain is just getting less blood and oxygen and it's functioning at a different capacity because it doesn't have the normal rate of oxygen and blood supply that it actually needs to function at a normal level. So if you get these facet joints to articulate in its full range of motion, indirectly, you're gonna take away any, any sort of interference on the blood supply to the brain. It's also one of the number one uh, causes of so many of the different symptoms that concussive patients actually experience is just as a result of that lack of oxygen to the brain. So by increasing the, uh, the motor activity to those areas via exercise, you're helping to restore the, the, uh, the blood flow to the brain. By re or taking away any sort of restrictions in the facet joints, you're, you're helping to restore the blood flow to the brain. And by being aware of where your head is in space is also going to reduce the risk of interfering with that blood supply going up to the brain. So for instance, um, being aware of where or how far forward your head is is moving, especially if you are being uh, subjected to computer screens or, or cell phones and stuff, and being aware of where your posture is is such a, a key factor in in reducing the uh, the irritation or interference on the blood supply, nervous tissue, and the muscular system uh, that connects to your head. So, it's not that you're in a terrible, crappy posture it's the amount of time you spend in that terrible, crappy posture, okay? We, like I said, we're dynamic human beings. We're meant to move, right? If we don't move, that's when we have problems. And if we s stay stuck in a crappy, terrible position, this is where we're gonna continue to aggravate, irritate, and perpetuate a lot of these symptoms that we're having, especially if we already have a concussion or have uh, have suffered post-concussion symptoms in the past or are dealing with whiplash or you just have a terrible posture because no one's ever told you that you need to fix where your head is in space. So focus on these different things. Make sure that you have full range of motion, blood supply to the head, you're sleeping in a proper on your back posture. Um, just to recap, whiplash, you have a forced flexion and extension of the structures in your neck, the facet joints and the ligaments that, uh, that line each level, those are what get, gets irritated. And if they're not corrected, i.e. if they don't have their full range of motion, and if you're unaware of uh, any sort of restriction in terms of your range of motion, these are things that increase the, the symptoms that are associated to post-concussion or, uh, or whiplash because both of those diagnoses have identical lists of symptoms. I hope this video was helpful for you. Visit the uh, drturner.ca, there's some more information. Uh -huh.